uncover the secrets of the aura this week on exploring the mystical side of life. Aura consultant Dr. Sandra Schurer joins us and shares how we can tap into the aura for transformation. We'll explore the emotional body, colors and their meaning, and how to elicit change. Stay tuned. Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com. We are exploring the mystical side of life. Once again this week, we're exploring the aura. If you enjoy our conversations, remember to subscribe, share it with a friend. I have Auric Field Consultant, Dr. Sandra Shore with me. Welcome, Sandra. Great to be here, Linda. Thanks for having me. What is an Auric Field Consultant? Well, I basically read the aura. So I consult with clients who want to get insight into their inner self and their subconscious blocks by viewing their their energy field, their emotional body. The emotional body, or what you could call, call the aura, the specific layer of the aura I see is called the emotional body. And it, it is a visual image, a visual representation of all the thoughts and feelings that are going on in that person's subconscious mind in that moment. And by looking at someone's aura, I can tell them specifically whatever their deeper thoughts and feelings are about a particular issue. Clients come to me because they have something going on. They feel stuck in some area of a life. They're confused. And by helping them tune into that, while they're thinking about that, I look at their aura and I can see all the different subconscious thoughts, limiting beliefs, programs that are getting in their way. And by doing that and really specifically de delineating what those are and helping them understand what those are, they get insight. First of all, they get an intellectual insight, mental insight. And then we do an energy healing process to actually pull those limiting beliefs and programs out of their emotional body. So emotionally, they respond completely differently to that issue and they see the bigger picture and they respond from that bigger picture, much more knowing place of what's really in alignment with who they are and what their soul wants and needs. So have you always been able to see auras? No, I just began seeing auras when I was a chiropractor. I actually received training from a clairvoyant. When I first started as a chiropractor, I really wanted to understand my clients on a deeper level because I've always believed the emotional body really affects our physical body in a very profound way. And, and this was back like in the early uh, 90s. So I really wanted to help people understand and clear their emotional body to help them with their physical health. And so I went to Hawaiian, studied with a very gifted clairvoyant, and she taught me how to see pictures. So for many years, I would see pictures around my patients' bodies when they would come in for the chiropractic treatment. And then one day, all of a sudden, the pictures turn to colors. The pictures were representations of what was in their subconscious mind. And then one day, I didn't see any pictures at all around this client. I just saw colors. And then the, the meaning just spontaneously came to me about what the colors meant. It was like a download. And then from then on, I would see colors around my clients when they would come in for their appointments. So that's how it started. That was about 25 years ago. Thank goodness that you got those downloads so that you could interpret what you were seeing and use it as a tool. How did you come to realize that it was the emotional level of the aura that you were tapping into? Well, I think what really made me understand that was when I would work with clients, tell them what was going on, and then clear it, they would tell me immediately that they felt different emotionally, and they would respond in a much more positive, clear way to whatever was going on in their life. And I would have clients come to me who were able to stop taking antidepressants because of the energy work that we were doing together. So I knew it was definitely affecting the emotional body. The, well, and the mental body as well. 
in my experience, the most profound shifts that are happening for people are in the emotional layer of their field. How is the emotional body different than the other bodies or the other levels of the aura? Well, the emotional body is really in charge of how we feel emotional. They say 95% of our decisions and actions and even thoughts come from our emotional body. So when I'm looking at the aura, the layer of the aura that I see, that is what I am perceiving. I'm perceiving this person's thoughts, their limiting beliefs, their programs, whatever is affecting them emotionally and mentally, subconsciously around that particular issue. So is it how someone is feeling in that moment or does it also reflect the baggage that they're holding? Both. It's their subconscious mind. I call it the emotional body because it's such a huge part of a person's field is that part of the aura that I see because it's very all-encompassing in terms of reflecting the state of their subconscious Now you see colors rather than images or symbols. Could you give us a rundown of what some of the colors might mean? One of the colors that I see very often in clients' auras is white. And this is an interesting color because when I see it in the emotional body, it means perfectionism or holding too high the standard. There are certain schools of thought about white in the aura. Oh, bring bright white light into your aura. Some people recommend that. And in the mental body, that might be a good thing. But when I see it in the emotional body, it's actually the person aiming for something that is a perfectionistic ideal that's actually causing them to have an inner conflict about what their soul really wants for them because they're pressuring themselves to go for this really high standard, they're actually not appreciating and seeing the opportunity or whatever it is that actually is in alignment with who they are. Another color that I see a lot is blue. Blue is the throat chakra, the energy of the throat chakra. So it represents will, volition, being committed, having a really strong sense of direction, consciously creating something so when a person has blue in their aura it, where wherever it is in their aura they will be really consciously in charge of directing that energy when it's dark however it means someone else's energy is coming in and attempting to control them at that level and usually it's a parent or a teacher's influence that told them they should do something in a certain way or they should match this certain pattern of behavior, but it's not who they are. So when they've got dark blue, they're wanting to kick out that authority programming so they can align fully with what their soul most wants for them and be able to honor that and do that. Green is the color of the heart chakra. So it's heart chakra energy. It's love, it's self-care, it's balance, it's healing, it's being in alignment with what we really want and need on a soul level. So when someone has green, wherever that green is, they're connected to the sense of balance, of self-honoring, of healing, of bringing harmony into the world, of the good of the whole, of being able to connect to other people in a very balanced, positive way. So wherever that shows up in the aura, they're directing their energy in that way. Their energy is expressing itself in that particular way. However, when it's dark, dark is that same energy held back. So dark green in the aura reflects a person's fear or programming that they're not deserving or not worthy or that it's somehow they cannot honor themselves. That energy is blah, that energy of being able to bring that harmony and balance that fast to start within ourselves, within our own self-love and self-honoring is not there. And they feel unworthy, undeserving, and so their energy is held back. That's a very common block. I see dark green in a lot. 
That's a common color. All these colors are common, the red, the white, and the green. Oh, I didn't talk about red. Red is the first chakra energy. First chakra has to do with the life force. When our first chakra is functioning really well, that energy is us being fully embodied in the world, in this three-dimensional space, honoring our life force. It has to do with individuation from the tribe. That person feels completely safe, secure, and supported by being their most evolved, individuated self who is separated from the tribe and who has now become either a leader or somehow is demonstrating this unique energy of who they are and it's contributing to the whole. So when that shows up in a person's aura, where it is in the person's aura will indicate they're completely on board with channeling their unique energy in that particular way into the world. They know it's very important. They know it has to do with this really deep level of contributing to the world and they're bringing their unique gifts to the world. And so their soul really gives them the sense of urgency around it. Dark red is indicating that this person has absorbed programming, that it's not safe to be who they really are in the world. They will be abandoned by the tribe. So it's a very deep inner conflict that what their soul is wanting for them is actually not safe. The programming has convinced them that it's not safe to do what their soul is most wanting them to do. High level cultural programming. And that also tends to be for a lot of people deeply subconscious because it's so hardwired in that, oh, I have to be this, I have to do this, I have to act in this way for me to be safe. And it's not true. So that's one of the most transformational colors that I see in science or is the dark red. It astounds me the depth of the information that comes through the colors. It's incredible. So we've all heard how emotions can be either trapped or let's say unresolved emotional issues can actually manifest into physical or chronic illness. How does knowing your colors and working with your colors actually help you to release them and hopefully improve your life experience, your health, your ability to manifest, your happiness? Well, whenever we release a subconscious block, our life force is free to do whatever that block was preventing us from doing. So literally, our life force, our chi, has been liberated. And the most common experience I get from clients tell me they're more confident they're more clear, they're more calm, they're more motivated to just do what they know is right for them to do. They get out of their heads and into their hearts, and they're driven by their emotions in these very positive ways where in the past, they would struggle, they would have to talk themselves into doing things with mind power, or they would be confused or conflicted, no more. They just are clear, they're confident, they're motivated and they just get into action. So it's really liberating this person's subconscious mind so that it can be aligned with who they are on a soul level and express itself from that place. Let's say you're working with someone on, I don't know, a relationship issue or abundance issue, and you're looking at their aura how can you tell that what you're seeing has to do with that issue and, you know, maybe not the fight they've had with their boss or some other experience in their life that's affecting their emotions? Oh, that's a very interesting question. So what I do with my clients, this is one thing that is always part of my consultation. I talk with them for a few minutes in the beginning and to help get both of us get really clear on what the real, as deep as we can go on a conscious level, what the real issue is. And I have them focus on that mentally. 
So when I look at their field, all the different stuff, programs, beliefs, limiting beliefs will pop out as colors in their field just because they're mentally focused on that. The aura moves and changes with our emotional state, right? It can be all over the place depending on how we're feeling. So when you are tuning in, do you see things like flashes of light and color or is it more stable light that you have white here and red here, let's say? The best way I would describe it is it's like I'm taking a snapshot with my third eye in that moment of that person's emotional body. And I see all the energies that are happening in that snapshot moment. And I see it in my mind's eye and it's stable because it's a snapshot. If they think, start thinking about something else, it might be different because they were thinking about something else. But I have them hold in mind whatever the issue is. And then I look at their field and boom, I take that snapshot. And that's what I describe to them is that snapshot that's tuned into that particular issue and reflects their subconscious mind around that particular issue. It just goes to show you how important it is to be able to shift your mind and change those emotional issues that keep you stuck. Oh, it's very powerful. Now you use emotional freedom technique or EFT tapping to shift the energy or release the beliefs that create these energy blocks within the aura, within the chakras. But what I find really fascinating about this, I use EFT or have been trained in EFT among numerous other modalities. And typically it's understood that in order to create effective change with EFT, that you have to kind of get to the root and tap on that root issue and then everything switches. This is interesting because it's not like a specific time, a specific place, a specific memory, or even a specific emotion, but it seems like a generalized kind of statement about what you want to create. But I think that because you've tapped into the colors of the emotional body, it's like an unconscious awareness of that root. Exactly. Exactly. Talking about the colors, that awareness while you're tapping, even though I haven't totally delineated everything in the colors in the statement, you are aware of it while you're tapping and you're connected to that in your emotional body. And you're clearing those blocks in your emotional body as you're tapping because we just talked about it and you're very much in touch with that. And so while you're tapping and you're reciting this very affirmative statement of this new energetic state, it clears the blocks and starts to actually install it in your body. You have created a tool, and I'm talking about your aura cards as a tool to help people clear their own auras. How does that work? Because they can't see those colors in their own aura, most likely. Yeah, so it's a basically kind of like an aura oracle. So how I created the cards, I mean, it was just sort of one of those lightning bolt moments is what if I created this deck and I put on the cards, all the most common colors I see in the aura and an affirmation that corrects that particular program, you know, if the colors blocked, what liberates that energy in the field. So I came up with this 49 card deck. So I used the seven most common colors and I created the aura deck. So each card is a color and a chakra and an affirmation that liberates that particular energy in the field, in the emotional body that makes it available for that person to use it. I use the colors that I most commonly see. So there's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, black, and white. So each color is a color and a chakra. I think your work is fascinating. Thank you. If listeners want to learn more, where can we send them? Well, definitely my website, www.aurapowerful.com. And I have a free aura colors handbook that people are really enjoying that 
describes all the different colors and what they mean in the aura. And it has an affirmation for each one. You can actually use the handbook to uplevel your own, own energy. You can also buy the aura deck there. And I also have a couple of group programs that I offer where I use this method. I even have a weight loss program. This method is very powerful helping people lose weight because a lot of the reasons people tend to overeat is to soothe their emotional body. And by clearing the emotional body, they find they don't have the cravings for the food because they're using their creative energy in a more fulfilling way rather than comforting themselves with food. That's one of my more popular programs. And I also have a group program called Soul Alignment for Success, where we use the Aura Deck as a group. That's a really fun program as well. Help a lot of women entrepreneurs in that group. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. You will find all of our conversations on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Come visit me at ThoughtChange.com to learn what energy medicine can do for you. While you're there, check out my group, Alchemy from the Inside Out. That's it for this week. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.